News in the world of Valheim, let's go. We have a patch today to the public test version of the game. No, this is not Ashlands, but it is preparation for Ashlands. So what are the details and what does this mean for the Ashlands update? They talk about how there's a lot of fixes and improvements today that they're doing to smooth out the game and prepare everything for the upcoming Ashlands update. This patch touches on all kinds of things from enemy spawning to build pieces and on. Most notably though, it features an upgrade of Unity and a significant change to how the game loads assets such as dungeons. So they wanna make sure that these things are in place and working correctly so that when they do push Ashlands, it will work as correctly as possible because those are major changes. And all modders should note that this will affect many mods. They have a link to a fact on their website under the support tab that is specifically addressing how this update is gonna affect modding. And they're trying to give some support to modders so that you can prepare for these changes in advance, which is really nice since they don't technically have mod support yet, but they are supportive of the modding modding community, if that makes sense. So let's get into the details. Fixes and improvements. Upgraded Unity Engine to 2022.3.17f. Changes to how locations, dungeons, rooms are loaded and unloaded. Basically, this is going to be about loading things as they're needed rather than keeping them loaded. And they'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit. Fixed issue where seasonal groups that extended over a year change wouldn't work in the new year. Fixed terrain modifications around locations not getting applied properly. Fixed bug where old pre mistlands terrain modification did not blend with newer modifications. Note, you have to run the opt terrain command to update the terrain. This is only for worlds that you have pre mistlands terrain in them. If your world was created after mistlands, you don't have to worry about this. Fixed issue with the point emote not orienting to the player properly. That's nice, that was always a little annoying. Fix multiple bugs related to the block list. Fix a bug where menu navigation via keyboard arrows keys stopped working after the setting menu was exited via escape or back button. Fix some UI elements to no longer flicker when the game is running at low FPS. Naturally spawned beds can now be removed using the hammer. That's handy. We don't have to pickaxe them anymore. Fixed a bug where Gerhoffa and Brenna would respawn after game restart. Turnip inventory stacking fixed to match other vegetables. The turnip has been fighting for equal rights for some time and it continues to make progress. Fixed missing text for fermenter without a roof. Fixed hard-coded text for kiln. Fixed a bug where wait for many items is not displayed for Turkish language. Fixed text in some languages not being centered vertically in the manage saves menu. Fixed items in merchant stores not being centered. Fixed sun shafts and soft particles. Graphics settings not toggling properly. Low disk space warning improvements. Fixed a memory leak when highlighting building objects. Improved time to validate IP addresses, which speeds up loading. A lot of their updates and little fixes seem to be about trying to speed things up. Players can now find friends on Xbox and Microsoft Store via Friends tab and Server Browser. That's handy. Fix missing text when trying to use an item on a cartography table and windmill. Fix an issue with Linux dedicated servers. Fix window resizing when exiting settings. Elder no longer spawns on his altar. So it seems that now the elder is gonna spawn just to the side of the altar or maybe just outside of that immediate area. Optimized minimap to reduce FPS drops when having a lot of map markers. Fix an issue with cloud saves on Microsoft Store. Weight text and UI tooltips now show both individual weight and total weight for stacked items. That's handy, that's gonna be a time saver. So when you're trying to figure out how much of this ore do I need to drop to be able to carry it, you can just look at it and know right away. Fix a bug that caused two days to be skipped instead of one when only Xbox clients were connected to a dedicated server. Tweaked how camera rotation on gamepads behave. Now a lot more similar to how it behaves on mouse and keyboard. Fixed inconsistent support calculations for cage floor one by one piece. Fix gap when placing banners. Fix items to no longer move in the inventory UI when upgrading them. Thank you. That's nice. One of those little annoying things that there's no reason for it to happen. Fix creature position not updating properly when transferring ownership. Fix an issue where block list would allocate two gigs of RAM. Now it 
only allocates what is necessary. Fixed issue with boat ownership when a client gets disconnected. That's a huge one right there. It's always a big question of what's gonna happen if somebody d gets disconnected when they're in a boat. Boats no longer suddenly stop when ownership is transferred or a player is accessing the boat storage. So they'll keep moving more consistently now without you wondering what just happened. Sails are now blowing in the correct direction compared to winds. Dealing knockback to an enemy in a slope no longer affects the player dealing the knockback. Good. Combat on a slope is challenging enough with the hitbox being at different levels. Gamepad and mouse now behave in the same way. Added caching for mini map creation to make startup time faster. More efficiency there. So quite a few fixes and quite a few optimizations. This is one of the things that I really love about Iron Gate. And I think we kind of get spoiled a bit with their updates in considering it's an early access game is that when they put out a patch, when they put out an update, they want it to be of really high quality. And so it feels like a finished game a lot of times. This can be a pro and a con, I guess, because some people critique them as if they're a finished game and not early access, but the players really appreciate the work that they put into bug fixes and optimization rather than just moving on to the next thing and leaving the mess to clean up later. So what does this mean for Ashlands? Obviously, it means that we're getting closer to Ashlands it has seemed lately like the little things we see them talking about regarding Ashlands is fine-tuning stuff and working on balancing things. And of course, Smithy mentioned that the less bugs found here, the faster that Ashlands will get out, which makes sense. We still have the official word being that Ashlands will be out by June of this year. Nothing has changed on that front. And Ashlands will be going to public test. If you want to participate in the public test branch, there are instructions on their website and on Steam and in the Discord. And if you do decide to participate, 100% make sure that you back up your game if you're willing to be a tester. I'm always keeping my thumb on the pulse of what's happening with Valheim. So if you want to keep up on all the updates, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, happy gaming.